Hey guys, this is Roshni and once again I welcome you all to my channel Circuit Glue. Today we will discuss what is Kirchhoff's current law that is KCL and how to apply KCL in a circuit. So without wasting any time, let's get started. Kirchhoff's current law abbreviated as KCL is also known as junction law. It is one of the basic laws of circuit analysis. Let's see what it states. So guys, KCL states that the algebraic summation of the current from all the branches at a junction in a network is zero. But there is another statement of KCL which is derived from this particular statement itself and it states that the summation of incoming current at a junction is exactly equal to the summation of outgoing current at that particular junction of an electrical network. Right now, it may be possible that you are getting confused between these two statements. But at the end of this session, I am sure you will properly understand the concept of KCL. So let's proceed towards that. Law of conservation of charge is the basis of KCL and this law states that charge can neither be created nor can be destroyed. It can only be transferred from one system to another. To understand this, consider the network shown here. As we can see that this network is composed of 5 branches and each branch is having a current which is either entering or leaving the junction. So according to KCL, the summation of all the current at the junction must be 0. For this particular circuit, this is our junction and as we can see that the direction of currents is not same. So if we consider the current entering the junction as positive, then surely we have to consider the current leaving the junction as negative. Therefore, we get this equation. On further transposing the negative values towards RHS, we will get I1 plus I2 plus I3 is equals to I4 plus I5. Here I1, I2 and I3 are the incoming currents, while I4 and I5 are the outgoing currents. And we can clearly see that these two are equal. Thus it verifies the law of conservation of charge and so KCL. Friends, till now you have heard the term junction so many times. But what actually a junction is and how it is differentiated from a node? So friends, a node is a point where two or more than two branches meet. Let us consider this particular point where these two branches are meeting. So this will be called as a node. Fine? But a junction is a point where three or more than three branches meet. Suppose this is a point and here three branches are meeting. So it will be called as a junction. But as we have already mentioned that it is not necessary that a node has only two branches. So it can be three, four and so on. But in case of a junction, it is necessary to have minimum three branches. Only in that particular condition, it will be called as a junction. Otherwise, it will be known as a node. So as we can see that this particular node is having five branches. So it can also be considered as a junction because it has more than three branches. So we can say that every junction is a node, but all the nodes are not junction. I think by now you are having proper idea about KCL. So let's now move further and understand how KCL is applied in a circuit. And for that, consider the circuit shown here. As it is clear from the figure that the circuit has two junctions. One is at node Q and the other is at node T. Thus junction rule is applied at these two junctions in order to get electrical currents at two different junctions. Initially, the current from 20 volt power supply moves towards node P and from here it reaches node Q. As node Q is a junction, so this total current IT will split to move in two different directions. One from this direction and the other from this particular direction. We know the current flowing into and out of a junction is known as branch current. Let's now use Ohm's law to find the branch current. Friends, we all know that Ohm's law states voltage across two points is directly proportional to the current flowing through it. Okay, so more simply we can write it as V is equals to IR. So a modified version of Ohm's law that is I is equals to V by R is used in order to determine the current through branch QT and RS that is I1 and I2. So for I1, we can write it as I1 is equals to V upon R1. R1 is this 5 ohm resistor. We all know that in parallel combination, potential difference across two points remains same. 
as we can see the potential difference between p and u is 20 volts and so the same potential difference will appear across qt and rs fine so substituting the value we get i1 is equals to 20 upon 5 20 is the potential difference existing between qt and 5 is the value of the resistor so we will get 4 ampere current which is flowing through qt branch in a similar way when we substitute the value of I2, we will get I2 is equals to V upon R2. The potential is again 20 volts and the resistor is now 10 ohms in this particular branch. So we get I2 is equals to 20 upon 10 and therefore I2 will be 2 amperes. Friends, according to KCL, the sum of current entering the junction that is IT must be equal to the sum of current leaving the junction. Fine. So for this particular case, we will get the value of IT as the summation of I1 and I2. So it will be 6 amperes as the value of I1 is 4 ampere and the value of I2 is 2 ampere. As we can see in the figure that we are having two junctions. One is Q and the another is T. So we can have a verified value of IT as I1 and I2, these two currents are coming back to junction T. So we can have the summation of I1 and I2, the current which is reaching node U. Friends, therefore we can say that 6 ampere is the current which is reaching node U and it is the same current which is flowing in branch UP. And this verifies KCL. Well friends, that's all for today's session. I'm sure it's going to be useful to you. So guys, please like and share this video and put on your comments below. I will be back with another interesting topic. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.